But happy Monday. I'm so grateful that you are here with me today. All right. So today we're going to be talking about on the job with 101010. If there is anybody out there that happened to be uh, in class last week, I would love to know what do you remember about goal setting? Goal setting was last week's class. So if you have any memories, um, I would love it if you would share it in the chat box. And thank you so much for putting in your names and your email addresses. Um, there's one specific acronym that I'm expecting somebody to write in the chat box um, if you were here last week. So I'll give it a few more seconds, but does anybody remember anything? Okay, short-term and long-term goals. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, awesome. Um, the acronym I was thinking of was SMART. SMART goals. Um, and SMART is an acronym of how your goals should be. Um, Uh-oh, we've got some more people in the waiting room. Yay! So if... You weren't in class last week. We talked about SMART goals. Um, SMART goals are, oh my goodness, I have forgotten the S. Isn't that sad? The M is measurable. Um, you need to be able to measure your goals. The A is attainable. It needs to be something that you can actually reach. If you are not a rocket scientist, you should probably not make a goal of going to the moon next year. It's probably not attainable. <laughs> Um, realistic, if your goal is to lose weight, it's probably not realistic to say that you're going to lose 100 pounds in a month. That's probably not realistic. And you also want your goals to be timely. You want to have a timeline on your goals. If you want to lose 100 pounds, maybe put two or three years on it. If you want to lose 20 pounds, maybe put six months on it. So you want to have a timeline. Um, for your goals. But that was last week. Let's talk about this week. This week's topic is on the job. Once again, you can use the chat room um, to make any comments or I am popular today, y'all. I am pop, my phone is just ringing. So what does work mean to you? Whether you're working inside the home, whether you're working outside the home, what does work mean to you? Go ahead and use the chat box. Is it just to make some money so you can pay your bills? Is it to give to bring value to society? What does work mean to you? Go ahead and use the chat box. And this is for everybody. Even if you've never taken a class before, I want to know what work means to you. And there's no right or wrong answers. If work is just a means for money, that's okay too. So we'll give it a couple of moments for somebody to, to put what work means for them in the chat box. Oh, and FYI, participation is how you get those diapers. It's not just attendance. You got to participate too. Because you can't turn on the Zoom and then walk away and be like, I'm going to get my diapers. Mm-mm, mm-mm, no, no. Um, the chat box, thank you, extra income. So just FYI, the chat box saves in a transcript to me. So I don't write down anything while we're talking. I go back later, which is why it's so important for you guys to use the chat box. My memory is not what it used to be. So, all right, so we've got work for you as extra income for respect and for time management. Okay, all right, these are great answers. Thank y'all so much. Um, question at the bottom is what you're doing now a stepping stone for your future so yeah okay you're working for extra income you're working for respect um, you're working to get paid and working for society society is what you're doing now a stepping stone to where you want to be so let's say your dream job is to be a surgeon let's say you want to be a surgeon are you working in a job that will help get you there because if you're working as a bricklayer if you're working as a mason that could actually harm you you could get hurt and your hands could be um, injured in a way where you can't do surgery in the future however 
if you're working, maybe you're working for a veterinarian's office, maybe you're working for a seamstress and you're getting used to using your hands in an intricate way. So I want you to start thinking about that. Is what you're doing now a stepping stone for where you see your future? All right, so values excavation. So for my new babies, I call you my babies because I love you. For my new babies, if you have a notebook or piece of paper, um, every time we have class, we're gonna do something called values excavation. Classes are for you. You get out of class what you want. If you have some junk mail and there's a blank backside and you wanna write on that, never to see the paper again, you certainly can. <laughs> if you want to write in a notebook so that you can have this information to review later, that's wonderful too. Whatever you want to do um, as far as the values excavation and the information being taught in the class is your choice. I am not going to check. You will get homework sometimes. I'm not going to check it. Um, there's no grades, <laughs> so it's really up to you. But the values excavation, like I said, it's every class we do the values excavation, and it's supposed to help you to think through your life, think through the steps that you're going through in your life to see if you're going in the direction in which you, you want to go in your life. So values excavation, question number one. And once again, this is for you. You can use the chat box if you don't, if, if you want to, or you can use a piece of paper in front of you. It's really up to you. But answer question number one, how central is work to my happiness and my well-being? How central is work to my happiness and well-being? All right, question number two. What are the motivating factors in my career? We kind of went over this question. Is it money? Is it prestige? Is it a challenge? Is it for flexibility, friendship? What are the motivating factors in your career? Is it to take care of your family? What is the motivating factor in your career? And if you don't have a career yet, what is your motivating factor for what you're doing now? Money, okay. Hey, look, there's no right or wrong answers. If money is your motivating factor, look, we got bills to pay. We got to have a roof over our head. We have to have a vehicle for transportation. Okay, we've got on here, uh, my children, yes. Okay, motivating factor for my career or my job is my children to get in college and take care of my kids, income. Wonderful, thank y'all. Question number three, how do I feel when I meet someone who chooses not to work or who doesn't take his or her work seriously? Mm. So we all know those coworkers that don't step up to the plate, or, you know, they're just there just to get the paycheck, but they're not actually contributing to the work atmosphere. How does that make you feel? Okay. Yes, we got on here. Not my business. It's their decision. Yes. Okay. Once again, no right or wrong answers. Even if your answers are different than that, I'm going to still say yes. <laughs> okay. Not your business. It's their decision. Okay because it's not affecting your pockets, okay? All right. A few more questions. Four, do I have a dream job? If I could do any kind of work in the world, what would it be? For me, these things have changed. When I was a kid, there were about five or six things I wanted to be. I wanted to be a teacher. I no longer want to be <laughs> a teacher, yet here I am an educator. Um, but as a kid, I wanted to be a K through 12 teacher. That is off my radar. No, no, thank you. Um, being an educator is a little bit different. Having you guys being with adults more up my alley. As a kid, I wanted to be a pediatric cardiologist. Um, but then somebody one day said, you know, you're going to have to deal with a lot of deaths of kids. So that went out the window. 
Um, let's see, I wanted to be an astronomer. I wanted to be an Egyptologist. Like, yeah, I just wanted to be a lot when I was a little kid. Let's see, in your comments, it says, um, don't let them get me distracted and not taking care of what I need to do. A lawyer, okay. Own a business helping others and making passive income, okay. A nurse, yes, okay. Um, we're going to talk about the ONET profiler a little bit later on, but for those of you that aren't certain of what you want to do, I might be able to help with that. Well, not me personally, but I might have a resource that can help you with that. Question number five, what are my talents? What is it that I am best at and have received the most recognition for? Have you gotten recognition for your art, for the way that you treat people, for the way that you sing? for the way that you write? What are your talents? Even if you don't think you're talented, what do people tell you that you're talented at? Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to do that meme of the dude like. <laughs> okay, yes, leadership skills. Sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit but other people see things in us that we don't see in ourselves. So I love that. Okay, leadership skills. All right, anybody else have any talents that you would like to share? All right, question, oh, my artwork. Being persuasive, okay, lawyer in the making. Okay, being persuasive. Lawyer or business person, artwork. We got an artist, a creator. Sorry, y'all, got something on my lip. Okay. All right. Question number six. How many years do I want to work in my life? Is retirement a goal or a nuisance? You know, a lot of people look forward to retirement. Some people don't. They want to work the rest of their lives. They want to feel needed and useful. Um, so what is it for you? How many years do you want to work? There are some people that have retired in their 20s and 30s. Um, so how many years do you want to work? Question number seven, what is my personal idea of professional success? Is it awards and accolades? Is it a particular job title? Is it a particular time within a company? What is your idea of professional success? And it can be different for everybody. Is it that you just want your kids to be proud of you no matter what you are? What's your idea? Okay, professional success, achieving my goals. Okay, all right. I like it. All right, so let's start thinking about some introspection. Uh, introspection basically just means to, to look within in yourself to, to see, you know, what your thoughts are, what your beliefs are. So when you are at work, whether it is your dream career or not, when you are at work, do you behave in a way that helps to build your future? And this, you don't have to write it in the chat box or anything. This is something I want you to think about internally. If you want to be the CEO of something one day, if you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be the head nurse, if you want to be these things, are you behaving now in a way that helps you to get to that future? Are you being combative? Are you being dismissive and rude? Um, are you being helpful? Are you making sure that your, whatever your work is now, are you making sure that your work is being done timely? Are you making sure that you're communicating with your boss? Are you doing the things with your behavior that will help you get to where you need to be? Next self-introspection thought, at work, do you behave in a way that will make your children proud of you? Your children are always looking. They're always watching. Even when we think we, they aren't, children are sponges and they are soaking up what they see and what they hear. So if you want your children to be proud of you, if that is something that you aspire to have happen, are you behaving in a way that your children will be proud of? And the other introspection, do you model your values for your children in the way that you behave at work? So if you value family, are you showing that 
to your children by the way you behave at work? If let's say you're in management, let's say you're in middle management and one of your, um, one of the people that you oversee comes to you and says, hey, I can't work overtime today. My child has a concert or I can't work over overtime today. My child has an orthodontist appointment. If you value family, then you would be a gracious boss and say, you know what, I understand. Um, go ahead and clock out, you know, at four or five or whatever time you need to. Now, if you value money over family, then you might say, well, I don't care about your child's concert. I don't care about your child's appointment. You need to be doing overtime. Does that make sense? Are you modeling what your values are at work um, so that your kids see what you value? If you say you value family, but you're at work 80 hours a week, maybe you value providing for your family as opposed to valuing quality time with your family. Um, oh, and that's the S from SMART goals, specific. Um, so maybe your values need to be more specific. If you value family, what about family? Providing for them or quality time? gifts or, you know, so be specific with your values and make sure that you're modeling your values for your kids because they're watching. Um, it says on here, item to ponder. Even if you don't like your current job or position, strive to have a good work ethic. This will come in handy for your dream job or position. And that's true. You know how they say, never burn a bridge? Um, you, you don't want to leave a bad taste in the mouth of people at a previous position because you never know if you might need them in the future for a reference or for something of that nature. Like, let's say you apply for a new job and they're like, oh, okay, well, we need to contact your old job just to, to make sure. If you burned your bridge, if on your last day you flipped tables, burnt some stuff, cursed some people out, do you think that they're going to give you a good reference for the current job? No. <laughs> so just be mindful that even if you are not where you want to be now, be mindful of your behavior and your actions um, because it, it just could help you get to the next level. All right. So it's time to 10, 10, 10. So 10, 10, 10, for those that are new, 10, 10, 10 is the entire semester that we're talking about. 10, 10, 10 is a decision-making tool. And 10, 10, 10 basically is, I, I want to call it an acronym. It's not an acronym because it's not letters, but it's a numeric device to assist you in making decisions. When you look at decisions, you want to think about how will this decision affect me in 10 minutes? in 10 weeks or 10 months, and in 10 years. You want to look at short-term, medium-term, and long-term of how this decision will affect me. So the prompt here for your 10-10-10, once again, if you have some junk mail, you want to write on the back of that, or if you have a notebook that you want to keep forever and ever, go ahead and 10-10-10 um, a decision. So, oh, let me go back. So think about something that you did at work that went well, um, whether it was a presentation, whether it was negotiating for a higher, sa higher salary. Think about something at work that you did well, you handled it well, and 10, 10, 10 it. So basically on your piece of paper, you're going to think, okay, I negotiated a higher salary. What did I do, you know, within... To make this decision, what did I do 10 minutes in? What did I do 10 weeks in? What did I do 10, 10 years in? So maybe for negotiating a higher salary, when you were applying for the job, you looked at, you researched what other people in that same position were making and you made notes. So that was your 10 minutes. And mind you, it doesn't have to be exactly 10 minutes. It's basically short term, medium term, long term. So maybe medium term, your interview came up and you made sure to look over that list again of what other people were making in that salary position. In 10 years, 
maybe you're making double because you were so good at negotiating that salary, it helped you to negotiate more salaries. Make sense? All right, so think about something that you did not do well at work and 10, 10, 10 that. Um, maybe you got into an argument with a coworker. Maybe you negotiated a salary and got denied. Um, think about something that did not go well at work and 10, 10, 10 that as well. And once again, this is not, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out um, thing. It can just be some doodles and, and brainstorming. But basically the purpose of this um, practice right here is to see if you can connect the dots between your values and how you handle situations at work. So maybe you think you value quality time with home, but you're looking at these scenarios and realize, oh, I actually don't value quality time with my family. I actually value more providing financially, or I don't, you know, I don't value quality time with my family. I actually value doing a good job first and foremost, or whatever you're starting to learn about yourself. But you've looked at you know, something you did well at, at work, you've looked at something you didn't do so great at work, and now you're connecting the dots um, and hopefully honing in on what your values are. All right, so you all had homework last week. Um, and I, once again, homework is for you. If you did not do it, you get another chance. But for anybody that did do the homework, if anybody did go to do their own net interest profiler, I would love to hear um, in the chat box if anything surprised you, if anything was right on target. For those that are new or for those that did not do the ONET profiler is assignment, let me tell you a little bit about it. So ONET interest profiler is basically a tool that was created to help people figure out what their interests are and what that translates into into a career that coincides with that interest a career that would bring you fulfillment so you do it online um, back in the day i actually used to give this out in class on paper and you had to score it and all that fun stuff but now we're online we're fancy so it's 60 questions. It sounds like it's a lot. It's not. It takes, I think the last time I took it, it took me five minutes, but I've taken it multiple times. So we'll say it'll take you 10 to 15 minutes to do it. And you're basically answering questions. Um, which one interests you more? Um, building a cabinet, a kitchen cabinet set, or writing a play? Um, which one interests you more, teaching a class or teaching a class on art history or teaching a physical education class? Like the, the questions are very, very easy and it's all about you. You can't mess up on questions about you. Um, and like I said, at the end, it tells you um, what the market, what the, the tool sees as your interests, and then you can look into what jobs match those interests. So I don't see any responses, so I think that means nobody took it last week. No worries. You get another chance. We're actually going to talk about ONET um, more in detail next week. So you see the, the website at the bottom, mynextmove.org backslash explore backslash IP. I will send that out in the email on Friday um, so that you can do it this weekend if you don't do it during the week. <laughs> so once again, you want to go to mynextmove.org backslash explore backslash IP to do the ONET interest profiler because we are going to talk about your results next week. Um, oh yeah, it looks like, oh my goodness. That's it for the slides. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So see, it was nice and painless. I love you guys. You are worthy. Have a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye.